Hi, this is Richard Bross, CTO of Silverspore, and today I'm going to be demonstrating the Buttonspore 1.0, the first in Silverspore's new line of self-configuring IT management appliances. I've already connected a new spore and configured it for the network, so let's type in the address and get started. The first thing you see when you browse over to a spore is the landing page, which has two links one to go directly to the monitoring interface and the other for configuration. Let's go into the SPORE configuration to get started. We're now viewing the monitoring status and as you can see it's showing one host and seven services. We haven't run Discovery yet so let's click on the chart to see what these numbers represent. For security reasons there are separate logons for the configuration and for the iChinga monitoring interface. What we see is that the spore is actually just monitoring itself. Nothing really interesting, so I'm going to close the iChinga monitoring interface. Let's see how quickly we can get the spore to monitor all the servers and devices on our network. I'm clicking on the Discovery Configuration tab, and now I'm going to enter our first subnet, 192.168.0.1 to 254. I'm going to enter the subnet of a remote office location as well. Click Save. I could click the Discover Now button, but operating system identification will be a lot more accurate and the SPOR will find a lot more services if I enter some credentials. So let's start by entering some SNMP community strings. I'll enter a community string that I know we use for SNMP management, and then I always like to enter public as well, which is the default for many devices. Let's save those entries as well. The SPOR can detect whether a device supports a management protocol. To speed up discovery, put your most used credentials at the top of the list. Now let's enter some Windows credentials. These can be in the format of either domain slash user or machine slash user. Our Windows network uses Active Directory, so I'm using domain admin credentials. Click Add, click Save, and we're done. Our credentials have been entered, so what's next? Well, pretty easy. All we have to do is hit the Discover Now button and our work is done. The Spore takes over and does the rest. The Spore automatically took us over to the Commands tab so we can see the feedback of our Discovery operation. Discovery is a multi-stage operation. The first thing the Spore does is look for all devices on the subnets that we entered. This usually takes 15 or 20 seconds, as you can see. The next stage is the longest running. Here the Spore will probe each device to see what services are running. So I'm going to pause recording and then restart it when the spore has finished this stage. Magically, we're back and it's done. You can see it took just under 16 minutes. Now the spore will take the credentials that we entered previously and attempt to refine the identification of the operating system and services on each device. This stage will take about three or four minutes, so I'm going to pause the recording once again. And there we go. The SPOR will now actually generate the configuration files to drive the iChinga monitoring software. These files can number in the hundreds even for the 42 devices that the SPOR found on our small demonstration network. Anyone that's ever had any experience with iChinga or Nagios can vouch for the days or weeks that this process normally takes. But as you can see, the SPOR completed it in just a matter of seconds. So let's click over to iChinga and see what we've accomplished. This is iChinga's tactical overview. Here we can see that the SPORE configured all 42 devices and over 200 services. The dashboard is green, meaning everything's okay, but in fact the services haven't all been checked yet. Let's take a look at the host group view. Here we can see that the SPORE grouped wireless devices together, servers, firewalls, etc. It grouped the servers together, whether they be Windows, Linux, or something else such as FreeBSD. This isn't the only way to group devices, and in part two of this demo, we'll show you how to change it. Now let's take a look at the service group view. This is a logical view, web services together, email services together, etc. We also have specialized groups like Linux Server Health or Windows Server Health. The Services Detail view shows us each host with its services listed underneath. This is the view that I prefer to use since it shows the status of all hosts and services at the top with the detail on the same page. Clicking back to the SPORE configuration interface, 
I'm going to quickly click on monitoring options and I just want to click the option to enable the capturing of performance data. The reason for this will become clear in part two of our demo. And now we'll save. Before we quit, let's click on over to the iChinga interface and see how we're doing in checking all these services. We can see that some have been checked and that the return values are on the right. It takes a few minutes to complete all 200 plus initial checks. Back at the monitoring status page, we can see that all the graphs and charts match what we saw in iChinga. That's it for part one. Check out part two to see a full demonstration of all features. So long for now.